The shelter is in the vein of the Monsters Are Due on Maple Street, or to a lesser degree, the recently reviewed Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? Rott seemed to really enjoy writing stories that put his characters in a situation which could have friends, neighbors, or good-natured people in general turn on each other if their survival was being threatened. Maybe enjoyed is the wrong word, but it's obvious he had an inner need to show man at his weakest to warn us about what could happen. There's no alien, monster, or supernatural threat in the shelter. Its message is more straightforward. While that can be a detriment to a sci-fi leaning show, I thought this story in particular worked because it was so grounded. It's something that could have happened then, and let's be honest, can still happen now. That's what makes it so chilling. Dr. Bill Stockton is being honored at a pleasant neighborhood birthday dinner with his friends and family in attendance. However, the mood swiftly changes when a warning from the civil defense authorities suggests dangerous unidentified objects are flying toward the area. Anyone listening should stock up on food and water and head to a bomb shelter if they have one. The guests leave Dr. Stockton's house as he gathers supplies while corralling his wife and son into their shelter. Soon, his friend Jerry comes back, looking for a safe haven for him and his family since they don't even have a basement. Bill at first sympathetically refuses, saying he wishes he could help, but a shelter is only big enough for three people and there's not enough food or water for them. Every neighborhood friend that was in his house earlier then begin coming back with their families, seeking asylum from the coming nuclear attack. Their nervous demeanors quickly turn to desperation, panic, and anger as the Stocktons are locked inside their shelter with the whole block demanding entry. This was Lamont Johnson's first episode to air. He went on to direct seven more, making him one of the more prolific directors in the show's history. I thought this was a great start. It's one of those that has gotten better with age, in my opinion. Johnson didn't seem to feel the same way, though. In Mark Zickrey's The Twilight Zone Companion book, he admits he wasn't a huge fan of Rod Serling's script. Quote, That was Rod in one of his messianic moods. It was too uptight with his own self-righteousness, I think. I found it an interesting idea, I think the thesis was excellent, but I think its devices and its general style of writing were a little too pompous." End quote. Kind of harsh words there. From conversations with other Twilight Zone fans and checking some of the chatter online, The Shelter is regarded as one of the better episodes of the series. I'm definitely on that side of the fence, I really love it. I'd even go as far as to say it's better than the monsters are due on Maple Street. And if you've seen my review, that may not be a surprise. But I think the shelter is a much more believable progression into Panic, where the characters not only desperately try to force Stockton's door down, but say horrible things to each other. They're lashing out in what they think are the last moments of their lives, with potential salvation eight inches of steel away. That's the way it is when the foreigners come over here. Pushy, grabby, semi-American! Nobody cares what you think, you or no. your kind! I think the first order of business is to get you out of here! <laughs> Racism, tribalism, superiority complexes, they all rear their ugly heads. Actually, this reminds me of something some crazy guy once said. In their last moments, people show you who they really are. What's really scary is that those sentiments can spread in such a setting. There were no big leaps here. You can empathize with these families trying to survive. They're about to die, and their friend, no matter how logical his argument is, is essentially dooming them. But Serling's point here is that if we don't have some measure of rationality among each other or some one to keep the rest of us calm in these predicaments, the worst of us can and will take over from the inside out. The absence of a strong good guy presence, if you want to call it that, was intentional. Jerry, and maybe Marty, who eventually agrees to listen to reason, sort of fits some of those attributes, but he's not a saint either. I just think it wouldn't have hurt to throw a Steve-type character from Maple Street in there. There are good, selfless examples to follow under pressure, but that wasn't the main idea of the shelter. As Rod said on screen, What you're about to watch is a nightmare. The acting from this cast sells the whole scenario. Without how good most of these actors were, this could have been a hokey misfire. While I think he's sort of the weak link, Larry Gates has a few good scenes as Dr. Stockton, but his wife, Grace, played by Peggy Stewart, had maybe the best performance in the episode. Bill, why is it so necessary to survive? What's the good of it? When Joseph Bernard as Marty brings up Bill's status as a doctor, it recontextualizes the dilemma in one of the most compelling scenes. I feel sorry for you then, Bill. I really do. You probably will survive, but you'll have blood on your hands. You're a doctor! You 
supposed to help people! Who can forget Grandpa Joe himself, Jack Albertson, showing up as Jerry? He's not bad. This isn't his fault, but whenever the guy talks, I think he's about to yell at Willy Wonka. You're acting like a mob, and a mob doesn't have any brains. You're proving it by what you're doing! You're an inhuman monster! I said good day! Albertson would be back for one more episode in season four. Speaking of returning actors, Sandy Kenyon made his second of three appearances. He had a very recognizable face, so it was good to see him and his range pop in here. Joe Helton, Mary Gregory, and John McLeam were also in multiple Zone episodes. The neighborhood families start giving in to their darkest impulses as tribalism, fear, and madness spread among them. They become a small mob, carry a battering ram into Stockton's basement, and force open the shelter door. Just as it's breached, an announcement comes across the radio saying the president has declared the flying objects harmless satellites. The threat is over. Disgusted with how they treated each other, apologies surface, but the damage has been done. Even without a bomb dropping, their lives have been changed forever. That ending is fantastic. Not having a bomb was a great way to make these characters live on knowing what they really were, and that can be a terrifying notion. It's a haunting finish that Rod gives a simple summation to. No moral, no message, no prophetic tract. Just a simple statement of fact. For civilization to survive, the human race has to remain civilized. If you want to get nitpicky, I don't know how that metal pole could ram open a bomb shelter door, but whatever. It's not 100% perfect, but I think it's creeped into my favorite episodes of the show. I'm also not one to love dark endings. However, the authenticity here, both in the writing and performances, is something that has stuck with me for years. And the most frightening thing is... It's not something that can only happen in the Twilight Zone.